The strategic planning paradigm was not dynamic enough. It was not agile enough. Um, many times they would bring a, a group of the, in a company called the strategic planners into a room and um, they would hunker down and, and develop a plan and it took a period of time to do that. And um, they weren't always the people that were responsible for executing it. In many cases they weren't the ones that were out there doing the work. They didn't have a real solid grasp on what needed to be in the plan, let alone whether it was executable or not. Um, but I think the main thing was that it was a, a lethargic process where it developed a document that really wasn't um, applied effectively. And what has happened with the development of the internet has been a flattening of organizations. Organizations have just realized that they cannot have this great hierarchical structure if they're going to be agile and dynamic. So what this means is that um, the rank and file people are closer to the decision makers. The decision makers are closer to the rank and file. And so there's a dynamic interaction among them that, that needs to be exploited. And um, one of the things that's so important in uh, getting a, a workable strategy is having uh, the workers aligned and understanding what their relationship is with the internal processes of the company, what is required to satisfy the customers, so that we have delighted customers, and what the, um, what the stakeholders' objectives um, really are. So uh, the, the bottom line is, is that we have a, a burning need in industry to transform the strategic planning process where it accounts not only for um, how it's going to be formulated, but how it's going to be implemented. I'm a very visual person, and I think most people are. For a strategy, um, it's very useful to have the balance scorecard because it's a very visible linkage um, between what the learning and growth of the individuals are, what the company's internal processes are, um, what the customer needs are, the value proposition, and what the stakeholder financial objectives are. So, yeah, I, I would say that the balance scorecard is something that is it's very useful. It's widely employed. It was developed by a couple of professors up at the Harvard Business School. I think you're really getting to a core issue in terms of when you bring up the CEO um, and uh, taking on something like the balance scorecard. That's a whole new paradigm. And uh, you, what you have to have then is some real change leadership. Some people call it change management. Cotter calls it change leadership, where the, the guy at the top develops a, a coalition for change. Um, so the CEO does need to get on board and say, this is the way we're going to do, go about doing it. Um, he then needs to um, solidify uh, the understanding of what the mission is, what the vision is, and then say this is the way we're going to go about developing a strategy using a balanced scorecard where we develop these and, and articulate very explicitly the linkages between what the financial goals are, what the stakeholders want, the, the shareholders or whatever the case may be, what is required with your value proposition to satisfy the customer so that they're delighted, and then what the internal processes need to be.